I still remember it like it was yesterday. It was an unsuspecting Tuesday when everyone got on the internet and bared witness to this. SFPD! Uh... Meow? Come on. For many, this was their introduction to the live-action Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and needless to say, the reception was not very good. Everything about it just screamed mediocrity, from the unfitting music to the unimpressive acting to the low energy to the god-awful design of Sonic himself. The only saving grace seemed to be Jim Carrey as Robotnik, but even then that was trending on some really thin ice. And to say that people reacted negatively to it would be a huge understatement. People were really going off on this one, but they seemed to be particularly focusing on the model of Sonic, which really was just horrible. Everything about the way Sonic looked just felt wrong. The dead-eyed stare, the expressionless face, the unfocused looks, the dull color texture, the over-pointy pieces. It was a very, very bad design. It makes me question why people behind this model actually thought that this is how Sonic the Hedgehog is supposed to look. And knowing that this thing was going to be on screen for most of the movie was definitely going to be a huge distraction. So you get the drill. People were making all sorts of posts and blogs about how this movie was going to suck, dreading the arrival of yet another Hollywood video game movie that doesn't understand why people like video games. But then, something unexpected happened. Something that nobody saw coming. Paramount Pictures responded to the backlash, saying that they listened to the feedback and announced that they were actually pushing the movie's release date back for several months. They were actually going to take the time to redesign Sonic's model so that he looks less creepy and less distracting for the audience. Now, while this is good news on its own, it's not a guarantee that the movie would be good. But nonetheless, it was a very commendable action on Paramount's part. A lot of the time, movie companies tend to not really respond to reception and ignore it while moving forward with what they already got. But Paramount actually took the time to listen and make improvements to the movie. The only question was, how exactly would they improve? Would they succeed or fail? Would they step forward or back? And finally, on November 12th, 2019, this was their answer. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. On my planet, people were always after my powers, so I came to yours. It gets a little lonely, but that's okay. I am living my best life on Earth. They went above and beyond with this new design, and the amount of time and care put into it really paid off. Now Sonic doesn't look like a steaming pile of garbage anymore. This time he actually looks like Sonic. The more cartoony and less realistic aesthetic really benefited the style they seemed to be going for, and he just seemed to come across as so much more colorful and expressive. The eyes were properly adjusted and no longer looked like a dead stare glaring into your soul. The facial expressions were actual facial expressions. The body language was so much more fluid. Even the voice acting seemed to fit this cartoony model a lot better than the previous one. It was amazing that Paramount actually took the time to listen and care about what people thought. Not only taking feedback, but actually using it to take steps to improve. The original design looked like an uncanny, hairy, naked man. But this was the real Sonic the Hedgehog that everyone wanted to see. And it wasn't just Sonic's design. It seemed like a lot of other aspects of the movie were looking better too. We got to see more chemistry between the characters, Jim Carrey as Robotnik, the movie's sense of humor, even the new music they used for the trailer was much more fitting. All of a sudden, people went from thinking this movie was going to suck to actually pre-ordering tickets as part of their Valentine's Day plans. Everything seemed to be riding on the success of Sonic the Hedgehog, the one that had to stand against all odds and pull a victory to prove that there just might be potential for the future of video game movies. And after taking the time to watch the movie myself, all I can say is they succeeded. This movie was just so much fun, and even more so than I was expecting. Aside from the love and care that went into this new Sonic design, I really can't help but appreciate so many other aspects of the film. The characters, the comedy, the pacing of the story, the special effects, the acting, the cinematography, all wrapped in a package that came together in a surprisingly satisfying way. Admittedly, the movie has a really rushed opening regarding Sonic's origin and how he got to Earth, with practically all the information just being dumped on you during the first three minutes. And it's a real shame because the premise behind it has a really dark yet interesting tone. Like, it felt familiar to the Saturday morning cartoons where Sonic and his friends were being hunted. But after the opening, the rest of the movie has a much more stable sense of pacing with nothing feeling out of place. It doesn't have a bunch of subplots going on and keeps itself focused on the chase between these two parties. Each scene gets the right amount of screen time with nothing feeling too dragged out or short-lived. It really works in the film's favor that they stay connected on things that people came to see it for instead of focusing too heavily on the background elements. It doesn't pull any of that bullshit like in the Transformers movies where the Autobots get turned into secondary 
characters in favor of the boring humans. The title character of the movie is actually the star. There is a scene during the second act where they go to meet up with Maddie's family, but it's not really a burden to the story. There's some really funny interactions between the main duo and Maddie's family, and one interaction in particular between Sonic and Tom's niece that was a really wholesome and thoughtful moment. They don't stay with Maddie's family longer than they have to, and the movie knows to put the screen time into the actual main characters. The way that Sonic and Tom bond over the course of the story feels really genuine, and what helps to make it work is how well their friendship and their characters are established. The way Sonic is portrayed in this movie feels really true true and iconic to the source material as they really nail his snarky, carefree personality. He acts full of himself and can get in over his head, but he never does it in a way that makes him look incompetent. He's just a fun-loving dude trying to make the best out of his life, which is made hard for him since he goes through an arc about dealing with loneliness while spending most of his life running and hiding. The movie really takes the time to get you to connect with how Sonic feels about isolating himself and how it would result in his lack of social structure. There's this scene where he goes to a baseball game and he watches how the kids are really joyous and happy as they spend time together. And after the game ends, he secretly sneaks back to the field pretending to be a whole team of baseball players reenacting the game. He spends most of it being fully aware of his reenactment, but then near the end, we see how he really starts to buy into his fantasy, and really believes there are others watching and spending time with him. And when the reenactment ends, the reality starts to sink in that nobody's there and he's truly alone. He spent most of his life running and keeping himself hidden in order to stay safe, but it comes with a really obvious cost. He yearns to develop a connection with others and have a relationship with someone, which explains why he came to idolize Tom and Maddie from the shadows. But he knows he can't have any of those things because being by himself is the only way to remain safe, which frustrates him into that little outburst which results in that surge of energy that reveals him. It's a really well done scene that emphasizes the human aspect to his character. It addresses how Sonic has to deal with that lifetime of solitude while wanting something more without an exposition dump. It allows you to just watch as Sonic shows you how he feels, which is much more relatable. And when he finally gets a chance to develop a connection with Tom, he tends to talk a lot, as he doesn't really have a lot of experience in socializing with others. I feel like the element that the movie really gets right about Sonic is his mannerisms. It truly feels like everything people love about him leaped out of the video games and onto the movie screen, with a lot of characterization being given to him. He's a kid with high energy who loves living on the edge with a good heart and a desire to make friends. He's very adrenalinic, but also very vulnerable. It's made very interesting considering that it's also a different take on the character, with a different origin story and giving him an arc about dealing with alienation. They even got his age right with the movie establishing him as a teenager, which fits a lot better with his behavior. And Ben Swartz really does a good job portraying him as an actual teenager, unlike Roger Smith, who tends to make him sound more like an adult. Meanwhile, Tom wants to feel like he can make a real difference as a police officer, not just being promoted, but actually wanting to be there for others and help them. He's searching for an opportunity to prove himself, and there's a real earnesty to what he does rather than just being a jerk about it. The movie also does a really good job establishing his relationship with Maddie, but not so much that it overshadows the plot. The way these two communicate and how they interact with each other, they really feel like a happily married couple. They have a very organic chemistry and are given just the right amount of screen time to get it across. The movie actually does a really great job establishing Tom through his relationship with Maddie, portraying him as supportive and snarky, but also really compassionate and honest. And it's when you see Sonic and Tom working off each other that the film is at its strongest. The bond they have is very well developed, and it's something done gradually throughout the film instead of feeling rushed. The movie also takes the time to set up their friendship early on by having Sonic idolize him from afar, so when the two finally meet, it feels like they were foreshadowing something interesting between them. The scenes in the bar in the hotel is when they really start to have a connection and have good chemistry, as they relate to the idea of wanting to achieve something in their lives to give it meaning. The time they spend together is actually very well established, and there's some genuine comedy that comes out of it. And it's made even more interesting because they do have such fun and likable personalities. There's a really good balance between the two, with Tom working as a straight man to Sonic's fanatic energy, helping the dynamic between the two to feel grounded. It's two well-developed characters taking jabs at each other while keeping it in good fun. And with the theme of the movie being about developing relationships, it helps their friendship feel more intuitive. They also thankfully avoid those dumb and obvious cliches involving misunderstandings or something else where it seems they're gonna break up and not be friends anymore when it's really obvious they're just gonna get back together. There is a moment where they get into an argument during a chase scene, but it never escalates in anything beyond that. And what really works about this particular chase scene while they're arguing about Tom moving out of Green Hills is how in spite of their differences, it still shows how they're still willing to support and protect each other. We see them working as a team and still finding enjoyment in the other's company before they go back to taking stabs at each other. Moments like this help to make the friendship between the two feel bumpy, but very real, and none of it comes across as artificial or manipulative. By the end of the story, you feel like these two have really become good friends, even having some sort of adopted family thing going on during the final scene. 
It would have been really easy for the movie to stereotype Sonic as an edgy teenager or Tom as a mean-spirited cop and all they do is just annoy each other. Thankfully they avoid that and the two have an actual partnership where they work together, learn from each other, and help each other find that certain thing they were looking for at the beginning of the film. But I think the one thing that people are gonna like most about the movie is Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik in what, I'm not gonna lie, is the role that I think he was born to play. A rude, psychotic, fast-talking lunatic who also happens to be a mad scientist with a huge superiority complex. This is easily one of the great Jim Carrey performances, where he returns to his classic wacky element from the 90s and early 2000s. There's so much expression coming from this character throughout the movie where you never know what exactly he's gonna do next. It makes him really unsettling while also being really exciting to be around. Like, when you think Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog, this is the kind of villain that you would expect from the setup. Threatening, but also really, really funny. Instead of just goofing around all the time, he was surprisingly menacing and intimidating. From the sound of it, you would probably think he would just be treated as a joke throughout the movie, which would remove the idea of him being a threat. But they actually take him pretty seriously in this movie. The rivalry he has with Sonic is a ton of fun, as the film finds so many creative and ingenious ways for them to interact with one another. Even the interaction he has with some of the human characters do a really good job in helping him pose a threat while still being able to feel silly and comedic. It also works as a pretty good origin story for the character, which is refreshing since we don't normally see how Robotnik became what he is. Seeing him become more obsessed and crazy as the film went on, and seeing him fully transform into Robotnik at the end of the movie is amazingly done. And it gives a lot of potential to a sequel as we can see how Jim will be able to expand on this role. One interesting element to how Robotnik is characterized in this movie is how it creates a really interesting parallel as well as an interesting contrast between the hero and the villain. They're both incredibly powerful figures, wanting to use their powers for their own ends. Both of them are also lonely without any friends as a result of this power, but one of them actually craves these kind of connections while the other is a straight up elitist who doesn't seek them because he believes he's already better than everyone else. Jim Carrey's Robotnik is what Sonic could have been if he was an elitist due to his speed, which is actually really clever writing when you think about it. I don't know how he did it, but there's just something about Jim Carrey's performance as Robotnik that really brings the character to life. He really cranks his ham all the way up to 11 while somehow maintaining his energy and finding a balance in it. It's a very faithful interpretation of the character and it'll definitely keep you entertained. Another cool thing about the movie was how they handled the special effects. The body language on Sonic is very fluid and snappy, and they take advantage of the movie's style to provide us with some pretty entertaining action scenes. The bar scene where they do the Quicksilver moment was actually pretty fun to watch, not just because of the cool ways that Sonic interacts with the world around him, but because of how they just let him have so much fun with his personality. Like he knows he can get this done faster, but he has some free time and just wants to jam around. The climax has a really excellent pace to it, with a lot of high-speed action that really feels like it's out of a Sonic game. It keeps your attention with a good amount of energy while also mixing in a good sense of humor. As for the comedy itself, it's mostly a give-or-take kind of deal. There's a lot of jokes that are not very good, with some of them being really cringy. Like, there's a scene where Sonic does this floss dance from the Fortnite game, and I just thought to myself, did they really have to reference Fortnite? But when the jokes are good, they're actually pretty good. The delivery and timing on them is well executed, and it's made even better by how the movie maintains an upbeat and lighthearted tone. It's the kind of comedy where it's appropriate for a film like this instead of coming across as unfitting and distracting. There's never a moment where it gets too dark or too edgy and serious, but it never becomes too juvenile and immature. They allow the more emotional moments to play out naturally, which gives the tone a much better overall flow. The story isn't perfect though, since there is a number of holes that I noticed during my first viewing. As I said before, the opening is extremely rushed and not very well developed, where they don't really give much of a reason for why the Echidna are after Sonic aside from just wanting his powers. They also don't really put any time into Sonic's upbringing under Longclaw, which sort of makes the prologue feel really underutilized. Like, they could have had a much stronger setup, but didn't really do anything with it. There's also this extremely confusing plot element, where Tom is labeled as a domestic terrorist, and yet no one is taking the time to notice and apprehend him. There's this one scene where he's walking around the city with no disguise and nothing covering up his face. And when he goes into a building, he straight up shows his ID to a woman at the service desk. He was literally shown to be all over the news, so why is nobody trying to capture him? And what's even more absurd is how this plot point about Tom being labeled as a terrorist is completely resolved off screen. How did you even resolve something like that so quickly? Maybe that was part of the joke, but it just makes it more confusing. They never show you anything that explains what he went through to be proven innocent outside of the government just saying it's been taken care of. There's also this really weird part of the movie where Maddie has a sister named Rachel with a hostility towards Tom that's never really explained. 
It's made a little more understandable after the news saying he's a fugitive, but her dislike for him was established way before that. Tom and Maddie are shown to have a very happy and healthy relationship, so there's no reason for Rachel to dislike him. So why is she telling her to get a divorce? Tom has a really patient and positive attitude, and he never does anything wrong. Is it just supposed to be one of those sitcom gags? Because the gag still needs to have a reason to be there. But even with those holes, there's nothing so severe that it breaks the narrative or renders it nonsensical. It still maintains a good consistency. And the story itself remains simple and never gets too complicated. Now, without giving too much away, there's this stinger during the middle of the credits where they bring out a character that foreshadows a second movie. And while it is a good stinger, it does make me wonder how they're gonna pull it off. The company that worked on the CGI was sadly shut down, so how would they be able to make a sequel without them? If the CGI ends up being done by another team, there's the risk of the sequel being sort of unrecognizable since the special effects weren't done by the same people. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely gonna be hard to pull off. The ideas for a sequel are definitely there, as Sonic the Hedgehog has a pretty big lore with a lot of potential for a film franchise. Maybe a movie about Sonic's power being connected to the Chaos Emeralds, or him having a grudge against Knuckles after the Echidna drove him out of his home. Even something like the US military secretly working on a project to combat a Sonic-level threat and creating Shadow. Or Robotnik creating Metal Sonic. This is one of those movies where I really hope it gets a sequel because there's actually a lot of ground to lay out for a reason to keep the story going instead of the sequel feeling forced. I really am happy that this movie ended up turning out to be so much better than it had any right to be. I wasn't expecting it to be one of the greatest movies of the year, I just wanted it to be a fun movie with a good heart and respect for the characters. And that's exactly what I got. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good. Which is a lot better than what a lot of video game movies tend to get. For a Sonic movie, they really did him proper justice. It felt like they really wanted to tell a story with the source material, instead of just using it as a cash grab to make money off the IP's popularity. And nowhere is that made more evident than how they actually took the time to push back the movie's release and put forth the effort into redesigning Sonic. I really have to commemorate Jeff Fowler for actually stepping forward and having a positive response to the criticism while taking steps to improve upon a mistake. Paramount actually learned from the backlash and respectfully went out of their way to make sure it would be as good as possible. And I honestly believe that the movie deserves to be successful on that basis alone. Because the creators actually listen to people. Instead of ignoring them and releasing the movie with that horrible design, they actually put the extra work into it. It's an adaptation that does different things while still remaining faithful to the franchise, where they actually cared about about it and wanted it to be good. I don't want to say that Sonic's redesign is the reason the movie is good because it's obviously not true, but it is the reason people are going to see it. And in some way, I actually think it says a lot about just how passionate the Sonic fanbase can be. Knowing that they actually had an influence on the movie and their voices were heard, it's actually really commendable. It's one of those really rare instances that really showcase the power a fanbase can hold, and how they're really capable of making a difference by reaching out and being honest about something they have such a strong passion for. It's a movie that really rewards you for being a Sonic fan, with its heartfelt and fun-loving take on the character along with all of its other strengths. It has actual character development, a good plot, a really good take on the themes of alienation and loneliness, moving emotional moments, fun chemistry between the actors, and an all-around upbeat tone from beginning to end. At first I wanted to avoid talking about my personal relationship with Sonic as it doesn't really have anything to do with the movie, but as I was watching it, I really couldn't help but feel like I was a kid again. I felt like I was taken back to those good old days when I would visit my grandma, and how I was actually introduced to Sonic through her. She had a Sega Genesis and a Dreamcast in her dining room and I would spend a lot of time playing Sonic games while I was there. She'd watch me play a couple levels, have some fun reactions to me playing, and it really made me feel good that I was impressing her in spite of how bad I was at those games. I'd even go so far as to say that if it wasn't for my grandma, I never would have gotten into Sonic in the first place. That I actually have her to thank for growing up with an interest in the little blue blur that would lead me on a path to wanting to watch this movie. I know it sounds cheesy, but I really felt like this movie paid a really good deal of respect to those memories I had with my grandmother. How, even though she's not here anymore, her spirit still lives on somewhere inside those memories. And whenever I take the time to think about them, she'll always be there watching over us. It really makes me feel happy in a way that I just can't describe with words. So in conclusion, all I can say is go watch this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, this is a movie that you have to watch. Go support a studio that actually listened to criticism, and a movie that truly respects its fans, like Sonic the Hedgehog. Thanks for checking out my review. If you would like to support me, you can check out my Patreon in the description. You can also subscribe to my channel and stay updated on future videos. And as always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.